When you're out of work, GDP doesn't mean anything to you. Doesn't mean anything to you. We get it. All three of us get it. The president gets it. But yesterday, the GDP was announced grew. It grew by 3.5%. It hasn't grown that much since 2007, over two years ago. The economic forecasters have attributed, and by the way, left, right, and center, they've attributed the vast bulk of this growth to the Economic Recovery Act. Well, that's the vice president making the case for the recovery efforts by the president. That was Vice President Biden, of course, on the relatively good economic news, at least in big numbers terms. On the jobs front, the White House announced today that at least 640,000 jobs have been created or saved because of Obama's economic stimulus. Today's Wall Street Journal front page is economy snaps long slump. Is President Obama getting due credit on the economy? Well, we got Mad Money host Jim Cramer. He's at the University of Oklahoma for Mad Money's back to school tour. And Stephen Perlstein is a financial columnist and on leadership moderator for the Washington Post. Gentlemen, I was taken with the fact that the Wall Street Journal, which is a, it's a, no better than a middle-of-the-road paper, certainly not a pro-Obama paper, leading with the story today that the stimulus has a lot to do with the fact that the GDP is going up, that we actually are getting growth again. Steve. So it's the stimulus that you, th you know of, the $787 billion, but there's also the stimulus that the Federal Reserve has been pumping into the financial system, which does make its way to the stock market, to the commodities market, which we've seen the effects of that, but also makes its way into the real economy. So if we, this is all what we have because of Obama. If we had a neutral policy of just sort of collecting taxes the regular way and spending the regular way, what would be the economic situation today? Would it be resilient or not? Well, I, you know, the, the calculations based on this GDP number would tell you that instead of plus 3.5, it would be probably minus 0.5. So. so Barack Obama has saved us from a Great Depression. No, well, Barack Obama and the Federal Reserve and President Bush and Henry Paulson have saved us from the well Great said. Depression. Let me, is that your estimate, Jim Cramer, that President uh, Bush, before he left office in his lame duck status, worked with Paulson to begin the emergency efforts? Barack Obama carried it to full Keynesian activity there in terms of getting something done to stimulate the economy again. It always bothers me that I hear every name other than Ben Bernanke. Ben Bernanke is the reason why this is working out. Uh, I, I have to tell you, I always, I never like to debate Steve because I always end up feeling exactly like he does because he's a rigorous thinker. But I do want to point out that interest rates are incredibly low, and that is really the Federal Reserve doing that. I think that the stimulus package saved a lot of jobs, and low interest rates have created some jobs. There's no denying that the GDP was strong, but we are still at a perilous level of unemployment, and jobs are not being created it fast enough to make it so that I feel that that three and a half is anything other than rear view mirror right now, Chris. Well, where are we going right now, Jim Cramer, in terms of the jobless rate? Because in terms of the way we keep score politically in this country, it may be a lagging indicator, but it's the one people live with. Absolutely. And I've got to tell you that well, what, what's the what answer is not all jobs are created. Well, it, we're, stag we're going to be stagnant. I think that this quarter was actually a peak quarter. I wouldn't be surprised if we went down from here. Some was, ca uh, some was the cash for clunkers. But we have not seen the real money trickle down into the construction jobs that really t end up being much larger job creators than the teacher jobs that I think are a lot of what the stimulus did. Saved a lot of city jobs, saved a lot of state jobs. This is not doom and gloom. And I think Obama's done a pretty good job if you look at their report card. I think Bernanke's done an unbelievable job. And that's why we actually have any growth at all. Well, the question is, Steve, did we face a real catastrophe when the, when the president came into office? Did he avert it? And two, is he putting us back on a strong recovery path or not? Uh, he did what needed to be done and what government can do. There's only so much government can do, Chris. That's one thing you have to remember in these conversations about who's responsible. Is The economy is very powerful and government doesn't control it. There's not some dials here in Washington. All you've got to do is turn them in the right way and we can, we can get things right. So there's a lot of painful adjustment that has to go on and as Jim points out it's not all gone on yet and it, we've got a long period of years of slow growth and before we can really have all that adjustment completed. Well let's talk about scorekeeping. We had a few bad calls in the World Series last night. I particularly remember the one where they called uh, Chase Utley out at first but let's not count them. There was another one I heard from the other side that made the Yankees mad. Yeah. But let me ask you this. When you talk about saving jobs it's not like a pitcher in late innings saving a game because you know what that is. He he prevents the other side from turning things around at the end. He saves the game for the pitcher that gets the 
the game of record. But what happens, in, how do you decide, how does Obama say and his people that he saved 640,000 jobs or created, what do you mean by saved a job? How do you know what that means? Is it BS? Jim Cramer. No, it's not BS. I think that what happens is the president creates a, a psychological view in the country. And the psychological view is things aren't as bad as you think. So maybe what we ought to do is stop firing people. Uh, what's happened in the last six months is the is corporate America has decided, ah. you know what, we're not going to fire any more people. But where I feel Obama's going to be most challenged is when we do see hiring, Chris, it's not in this country. American companies want to hire overseas. Why? Because those economies are growing much faster than ours. They will yeah. fire five people in this country and They'll hire two people in Brazil. Well, you know, you ask about how do we know whether they saved a job or not. Look, if you, if you send uh, a check for $45,000 to the, for the state of Pennsylvania, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and they use that to, to keep a, a firefighter on, on the job or to keep a teacher on the job, then that's a job saved. Okay. You know, the amount of $787 billion is a lot of money. They're spending it. When you spend money, it's being used to, okay. to hire someone to Here, buy something. Here's the big fact that yeah. bothers people watching the show right now. We were told when Barack Obama came in. He was going to have a stimulus program. It was going to be a combination of tax cuts, but mainly building things. The roads were going to have road crews out there. They were going to have building things going up. The cranes were going to be up. The road crews would be out there. People would be working. They'd be waving those flags to slow you down. That's, that's the easy job. But there'd be guys working out there, right. women working out there. Right. Instead, the money has been poured into mayors tills right. so that mayors don't have to fire people. In other words, people with blue collar jobs or white collar jobs, teachers, etc. That's not very exciting to people. They're saving those jobs. We were hoping we'd have the smell of construction out there no, and lots of noise from the cranes yeah, and we well, haven't seen that. Let me push back. If you know, if you have kids and and you're, you you know, they don't have to go in a class with 40 kids anymore because they can still be in the class with 20 kids. I don't know whether I don't like the smell of that, Chris. I mean, right. you know, okay. I, mean, I don't well, have that visibility. But Steve, I, I, you know, Steve, I've got to tell you, when you look at the yeah. breakdown, they spent just a little bit more money than was spent on the big dig in Boston for infrastructure. There's $2.2 trillion, this is U.S. civil engineers' analysis, $2.2 trillion in infrastructure that's breaking down in this country. When you create those infrastructure jobs, you only don't start there. You create multiple jobs yeah. away from that. These were the jobs that create more jobs. A teacher's job, yeah, they do a fabulous, look, I'm at the University of Oklahoma. I'm very conscious of how great teachers are. But the teacher multiple of job is not nearly yeah. as great as if you're going to rebuild a bridge or build a tunnel. I'm well, with you. And by the way, Tip O'Neill once told me you got to build stuff with cement because it cracks and then you have to do it again. <laughs> you got to keep building these things. You want more infrastructure, more construction, more highways. Yes. Anyway, that's the idea. Thank you. By the way, good luck to the Phillies, Jim. Thank you. And by the way, we agree on everything. Thank you, Steve Perlstein. The most articulate. Thank you. Can, Thank you. Can we say articulate? Anyway, articulate guy in, in the whole business of writing about the economy.